Tears of the Kingdom is officially here, and ladies and gentlemen, I have to say it might be one of the best games I've played in a very long time. Most of you have no idea just how much you're in for and how big of a game Tears of the Kingdom really is. There are just so many new things to learn, see, and explore in Tears of the Kingdom. You don't have to worry about any story spoilers in this video, and I really wanted my first one in this series to be my top tips and tricks that I've discovered so far that's going to help you become powerful and not waste any time exploring all that this game has to offer you. So we're going to start this off with one of my favorite things that's going to help you become powerful very fast. You can now land on the back of dragons for really powerful items. Dragons can be found going in and out of these chasms and roaming around the map. If you launch out of a Skyview Tower and land on the back of one, you can collect 12 shards across its entire back. These shards can then be fused onto weapons or used as arrow tips that are drastically more powerful than your typical elemental arrows and can come in really handy in a pinch. Now just like Breath of the Wild, you can hit the body for a scale, you can hit the feet for a claw, or you can hit them right in the horn to get a horn. And I really recommend getting the horn because it is incredibly powerful when fused to a weapon. Next, I highly recommend keeping an eye out for these cherry blossom trees that you'll see strewn throughout the land. This first one is right next to Hylia River, which is just to the right of one of the first areas that will explore in Free Roam, which is called Lookout Landing. If you head east to down this road, you'll be able to find it right here. Now you'll notice that around these cherry blossom trees, there's going to be a certain type of fruit. Sometimes you'll also be lucky enough to find like an Endura carrot or another nice type of food. You'll notice that if you walk up to the base of the tree, there's going to be this little offering tray. And if you open up your inventory and go to a fruit that you picked up, you can hold it in your hands and then we can drop it right inside of this. We're going to get a little cutscene and something's going to spawn behind us. This thing is really pretty, but also very handy. You're going to notice that a bunch of lights start popping up all around you, and this will happen at any point throughout the map when you do this at one of these cherry trees. This is actually highlighting caves. Now, caves are really important in Tears of the Kingdom, and not all of them are obvious to see, so having these lights popping out of them definitely makes it a lot easier. Now, if these lights ever disappear, all you need to do is just re-gift a fruit to that tree, and it'll light them all up again. This next tip is to save you some time. If you're like me, you might head to Farron first thing to try and get yourself some hardy durians, because let's face it, sometimes you get slapped and you get slapped hard. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to say that it seems to be durians have been removed from the game. I have wasted hours upon hours searching for durians to only find mighty bananas everywhere I go. But there is a solve for this. Remember those caves that I showed you how to find really easily? Well, inside of them, you'll be able to find hardy truffles. You'll be able to find other hardy foods as well in caves, and sometimes you'll be able to find more than one, and some caves might not have any at all. Now, you might be lucky enough to find a big hardy truffle, but if you hold one of these in your hands and cook it in a pot, you'll be able to make a hardy mushroom skewer. Now, a nice thing about these hardy mushroom skewers is you get a full recovery of all of your hearts, and you get one additional heart. A single big hardy mushroom, on the other hand, will give you plus four hearts, which is pretty great. So there's a super awesome thing in Tears of the Kingdom if you suck at shooting like I do. No Notice how we just missed. If we use a Keese eyeball on our arrow, you can actually automatically hit your targets in the face. It's a homing missile to the face. It's pretty great. You can just aim right above them, hit them right in the face. I already missed again, see? Uh, but if we whip out a uh, Keese eyeball on there, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We're just going to hit them every time. Uh, hitting flying targets can be particularly frustrating, right? So equip a Keese eyeball, shoot towards your flying target. It'll lock onto it and hit it right in the balloon knot. At night, you can find these giant packs of keys just floating around the sky. And if you happen to have a Farosh spike that I already showed you how to get, you can shoot these massive packs and be able to get tons of the eyes all at once. These packs of bats are pretty prevalent around the central Hyrule area, and you don't have to use the Farosh stuff either. You can use shock fruit as well. So just wait for them to kind of approach you, shoot the shock fruit at them, and collect all of your nice eyeballs. You should really ha never have a shortage of these if you're paying attention at night. You're gonna run into these gotcha machines really early in the game. If you put just one Zonai charge in here, you're gonna end up just getting one item from the gotcha machine, which is a rocket, that's, that's pretty good. But if you go into your inventory and you hold five instead, something much better is going to happen. It's gonna bounce up just like it did before, but this time instead of getting one or what you would anticipate as being five, you can actually get 12 instead of five, which is considerably better. Now let's say you see something up high that you just don't have enough stamina to get to. Open up your menu and then go to your Zonai devices, take out one of these rockets and then go to fuse and we're gonna fuse it to our shield. And then what you can do is when you pull out your shield, that rocket is going to activate and you can actually get really high up in the air with these. It can definitely 
really, really come in a pinch when you need to get up high and fast. Now, this is also a great way to escape combat in a sticky situation. You can use it to enter bullet time and take advantage of different situations, and it's always great to get high above your enemies and just shoot them in the face. Maybe you've got a favorite horse, but you're scared to use it because your friends might laugh at you for not using the quote-unquote best horses in the game. Well, fear not, my friend. Use any horse you want, because we have a solution for that now. I don't know why I'm staring right into this horse's mouth, but that's my life now. Once you've tamed a favorite horse of yours, you're going to want to grab an Endura Carrot. You can get one from that Cherry Tree Blossom location we shared earlier, and then you're going to want to head your way to the northeast corner of the map, towards the East Akala Stable, and you're going to want to go through Bloodleaf Lake and make your way up here. If you provide an Endura Carrot to the shrine, you're actually going to be able to unlock the Horse God. Now, the Horse God is different than it was in Breath of the Wild. In Breath of the Wild, you could only revive a dead horse. But in Tears of the Kingdom, you can actually enhance your horses. So any horse can have max stats if you're willing to invest enough time into it and cook various meals for the Horse God to be able to enhance each and every one of its stats. Now I'm going to show you one of the most surprisingly useful things that I've discovered so far, and I'm kind of sad that I didn't know it sooner because it probably could have helped a lot. If you use your Ultra Hand on an object, and say you want to get to a certain spot that you just have no other way to get to, maybe it's not climbable or something like that, you can actually use your Ultra Hand to be able to move the object. Then we can go into the recall ability and we can recall that object and we can jump on it. And then this will allow us to actually raise ourselves into the air and be able to get to objects or places that we otherwise would not be able to get to. So yeah, recall works on objects that you move yourself as well. In Tears of the Kingdom, shields are no longer just shields. With the power of fusion, we can do a lot of really cool things. We already showed you the rocket shield, but if we go into our inventory, I'm going to show you a couple different things right now. I'm going to show you the less cool one than a much cooler one. We're going to take out the shock emitter as an example, and then we're going to use fusion on it. So now we have a shield with a shocker on it. And if we run up to any mobs with this thing, we can see how it's used. So let's go ahead and equip it. If we walk up to it, we can now electrocute mobs with our shield. So it's like having multiple weapons. But what if I told you it could get even cooler? Let's go ahead and equip another one of our weapons. Yeah, it's the Hylian shield, but now I've got one of those horns from the dragons. I've got the frost horn on here right now. And what I can do is I can parry into things and freeze them. And you can do this a lot. And not only that, but it does a lot of damage as well because it's also classified as a weapon now because it's a bladed object. You could do this in Breath of the Wild, but now with fusion, you can really turn any shield into a weapon too. And it comes in so unbelievably handy. Now the last but certainly not least tip I'm going to share today is going to be a lifesaver during your exploration. Very early in the game, you're going to be asked to explore a place called The Depths. This is an underground massive cave system that you can explore throughout Hyrule. It's literally the size of Hyrule. It's insane. But what's very interesting about this, there are these light towers down here that ignite the entire area and allow you to explore the map without being completely in the dark. Now, the cool thing about this is they correspond directly to a shrine on the surface, which means any shrine that you find on the surface can be found directly below it, which will really, really, really help you be able to navigate not only the depths, but if you find any of these lighthouses in the depths, you'll be able to find a shrine directly above it, and it might be one you haven't unlocked yet. So by exploring both the surface and the depths using this method, you'll be able to unlock all the shrines a lot faster. Now, I do really hope you all have a blast playing Tears of the Kingdom, and thank you so much for watching this video. We'll have plenty more content like how to get this wingsuit, the Master Sword, and the Hyrulean Shield coming out very soon, so keep an eye out on the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one.